During and after the presidential election, Mr. President, thousands of opposition supporters and journalists were arrested, badly beaten, and tortured. One woman, 27-year-old Nada, as you know, was shot to death while protesting, and her death was captured on a cell phone camera. Um, here is a, a shot of that cell phone picture, which I'm sure you've seen, correct? What would you say to her family? We are very sorry that one of our fellow citizens has been killed. As a victim of an uh, insin uh, agitational circumstance, an agitation that was carried out with the support of some American politicians, the Voice of America, and the BBC that actually promoted these agitations. Do you really b think so little of your citizens that they can be manipulated and brainwashed by Americans and, and the UK? No, that is not what I'm saying, but I do say that some agitations from outside were there. I mean, there are plenty of full documents pointing to that. Regrettably, one of our citizens lost her life. One? No, well, I'm referring to the picture that you showed, the person that we were talking about, but over 30 people had lost their lives and as a result of the um, situation after the elections, and our judiciary is uh, actually looking at the cases now. I'm confident that the perpetrators of those acts will be punished. M Ms. Neda Agha Sultan was killed in the midst of a chaos. Do you know this picture? No. Do you know her? No. Well, rightfully so. Because American politicians do not want American people to see what goes on around the world. She's a lady, a mother, who lived in Germany. Um, somebody attacks her. She goes to the court along with her child and husband to complain. The person who attacked her so he goes to the court, which is supposed to be the safest place, attacks this woman and kills her with 20 stabs of a knife in front of the court in a place that's supposed to be a safe haven for everyone. And where her husband tries to protect her, the police actually shoot at her husband in Germany just two months ago, after Ms. Neda Agha Sultan was killed, and you're telling me you didn't hear this story? The question I want to ask American, the U.S. media is, why is it that you were not informed about this event? Who are the, what are the hands in the world that actually talk about Nida or Sultan and turn it into the number one issue in the world? And we, I have to say, are very concerned about the loss of her life as well, but at the same time forgets about other forms of loss of life, like this woman here. I mean, it's exactly the same policies and approaches that I spoke about early on in our interview that need to change. If we want law, it has to be for everyone. It has to apply for ev to everyone. Now, just because this happened in Germany, and Germany happens to be an ally of the United States, doesn't mean that the law doesn't apply to them, or just simply because Germany belongs to the capitalist bloc. <laughs> Mr. President, three months after the protests, hundreds remain jailed and continue to be tortured solely for their dissenting political views. Isn't this, or doesn't this overt abuse of human rights discredit you within the international community? How do you know that they were tortured? Well, we've read testimonies from families whose loved ones were jailed and beaten. There are accounts from fellow journalists who were arrested and beaten. A member of your own parliament confirmed that a number of young people died at a prison holding protesters. 
the head of that prison was fired, and the documented case of the son of a political advisor who died in prison after being severely beaten. This is how we're aware of this. In Iran, the judiciary is an independent body. It does not make decisions based on political circumstances. <coughs> nor does it make decisions based on propaganda. It makes decisions based on the framework of law. So you refute this? Yes, the way it's said here. No, it's, it's not the way it, you said. There were certain officials that violated the law and the judiciary is looking into it and they will be punished. Anyone who violates the law should be punished. It doesn't matter who it is. Violating the law by protesting? Yes. If the protests are illegal, that can apply to them. The law does apply to them. We have a law in our country, you know. On a daily basis, the number of people who are killed in the United States by the police exceed those who were killed throughout the protests in Iran post-elections. Just take a look across the country and you'll find higher figures. Finally, Mr. President, last night in an interview with the Associated Press, you backed off your claims denying the Holocaust ever happened, but as recently as last week, you said the Holocaust was false, a lie based on an unprovable and mythical claim. Are you now admitting that the Holocaust, in fact, did happen? Well, if we want to just say a myth, or a story, we, there are three definitions for what it is. I'd like to give you the three definitions and you tell me which one applies to the Holocaust. One definition is that there are stories that are untrue that are made to alter, to shape the views of people about certain subjects or to create mythical heroes or myth mythical um, forms of murder or to turn and create really good people out, make really good people, people out of these stories. Um, that's the, one of the definitions of what a story or is. A second definition is when an event does happen, but then the reality of the event is distorted. The truth about it is distorted and reset in a different way. And that too can make a story. A third definition of a story is when an event happens, but the results and the consequences have really nothing to do with the actual event. For example, let's assume someone in Texas um, drinks alcohol and kills a few people. But then in New York, a teacher is taken based on the crime carried out in Texas and electrocuted. Well, which one of these definitions do you think applies to the Holocaust? I'm not sure I follow you. Well, I'd like to ask you to think about what I said. Something happened in Europe, an event happened in Europe, and you, you insist to tell me, to get me to say that it happened. And I want to say, well, you have a right to insist, and that's fine. So we'll assume that what you say about this event is true. Fine, we can put that aside and then ask ourselves, where exactly did it happen? In Europe. By whom? By a European government at the time. So what does this have to do with the Palestinian people? No, but that's a separate issue. You have consistently denied the Holocaust happened. You have called it a lie. And I'm just curious, I have some photos. These are dead bodies from a German concentration camp. 
taken by the Associated Press. Mr. President, is this photo fabricated? Is this photo a lie? No. I'm asking you a different question. There are many historical events, similar historical events. Why is this one in particular so important to you? Because you're denying it happened. But in World War II, 60 million people were killed. Why are we just focusing on this special group alone? We don't have to focus. It was part of the. It was a part of the genocide a part of a larger genocide. So why do you refute that that part of the genocide took place? Allow me, allow me to say what my position is. This is not what my position is at all. I think that there is an overemphasis on this issue in order to neglect the occupation of Palestine. We weren't around 60 years ago. And we don't know exactly what happened. But we do know that there is a genocide happening in Palestine now. That's a so and I'm asking issue, you Mr. what will it, it is not a separate issue at all. We are using the Holocaust as a pretext to occupy Palestine, to establish the Zionist regime based on the pretext of the Holocaust. You know, two 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 allow me, I do request and urge you to expand on the historical aspect of this issue. I ask you again, why do you insist on this event alone? Sir? We're not talking about the aftermath of the Holocaust. We're talking about claims that you have repeatedly made. This is a separate issue, Mr. President. Claims you have repeatedly made that it never took place. Again. I'd like to show you this photo if I could. You're telling me it happened. Now, show this to a historian and tell me what the historian will tell you. And as far as historical and scientific issues are involved, we're not a layman to discuss these issues based on a layman's approach. I'd like to have an a, a scientific and historical and academic perspective on any historical event that happened to guarantee that the logic of the discussion is there. What I'm saying is that if a historical event has indeed happened, then we must allow more uh, further examinations of the uh, event. That's fine. Why is it that anyone who raises any question about any aspect of the event is stopped? What is the mystery to this event? If you don't know about it, I'd like to tell you. Don't you? It, is a, it was a pretext to occupy Palestine. And that is unacceptable to us at all times. No scientist, no academic can accept the logic of this event. In the end, when it happened, it happened in Europe. So why do we need to examine a historical event now, here, today? Why is there such level of bias, it's so much rigidity over this issue? I mean, in the end, it's just simply because of the consequences, the aftermath that you said. If you move away the aftermath, and the consequences of this event, then the event is a standalone event, a piece of a, six, of a part of history during which 60 million people were killed, and we are very sorry that it happened. And we're sorry for all the 60 million people that lost their lives equally. All of them were human beings. And it doesn't matter whether they were Christians or Jews or Buddhists or Muslims. They were killed. So we're sorry for everyone. But if we want to derive a conclusion from that event, to give ourselves the right to go and kill Palestinians, just the way it's done today, there's genocide in Palestine, then we really need to focus on the question of genocide on Palestine. But if I'm following you correctly, Mr. President, you are in fact conceding that the Holocaust did in fact take place. Well, you can conclude whatever you like from my remarks, but what I have before my eyes is the genocide that's happening right now. Why is it that our tongues are tied? Why is it that the tongues are tied here in the U.S. media? Um, why is it that your cameras are not focused on the genocide there? I mean, it's a serious question when you think about it. Um, just by accusing Ahmadinejad, you can't eliminate the reality on the ground there. But one doesn't have to negate the other, Mr. President. 
شما دارید یه چیزی رو با هم ارتباط می‌کنید. You are connecting two things. من میگم این ارتباط رو شما روشن کنید. And I'm asking you to clarify on the connection between the two events. What is the nature of the relationship between World War II and the events that transpired? And the Palestinian issue now. We don't live in the past anymore. We're alive now, here. So we must stop murders and killings now. As you continue, though, Mr. President, to deny the existence of the Holocaust, it undermines your credibility on the international stage. I know that it alienates you from much of the international community. Uh, it, it, many people think you're trying to delegitimize the very existence of Israel by doing this and to distract from other issues such as your nuclear program. Are you concerned about me? I'm asking. You're telling me that I'm the one that's really being um, on, the, on the margins, but uh, then you're expressing concern about me? But if that's the case, you really shouldn't be concerned about my, uh, me. With these pictures and with these words, we can never give the Zionist regime any degree of legitimacy because it is a regime based on usurpation, occupation, and the murder of innocent people. Rest assured that neither history nor the states in the region can ever legitimize this state, uh, the state, uh, this regime, uh, or recognize it. If anyone wants to assist the Zionists, I think that they can do so by asking them to revisit the concepts of law and justice for all. I think that we need and they need to consider the fact that the Palestinian people, like everyone else, has the right to self-determination. Any Palestinian, wherever and of whatever creed and belief, Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, should have the right to self-determination now decide about their own face, and we should allow that to happen. Well, I wish you every success, and thank you for this interview. Thank you very much, Mr. President.